We're going to look at how to download and prepare your survey data for analysis in Excel. Now, in this case, we're going to be downloading data from Google Forms. You might be using SurveyMonkey or some other data collection software, but it'll be approximately the same. But here, we're in Google Forms. So we go to Google Forms, we click on our survey, and it shows up the questions. We want the responses. So you go to responses. Once you've collected all that you're going to, now this says that there was just one. You probably want at least 100, maybe up to 300, depending on the power that you have in your research design. Um, we go over to responses, and it says summary, individual. Now those don't really count. We want line by line, so we need to go to this green uh, cross over here and view the responses in sheets. So we click on that and here we have the data and as you can tell there's more than uh, uh, there's more than uh, one piece of data that's collected because I, uh, I put other data into this and what we want to do is we want to download this into Excel because Google Sheets is good but it's not nearly as powerful as Excel especially for statistical analysis. So I'm going to go over to File, and I'm going to go to Download as a Microsoft Excel file. Click on that. That opens up Excel, and that gives me the data in Excel format. Now we want to do a number of things to this before we can uh, uh, analyze this. We need to put this in a table format and we have to label each variable uh, quite clearly so that we know what we're going to analyze. Now let's see what do we have here. We've got up in this first line we've got column headers. This first one's timestamp. That's when somebody the time and date that people filled in the form. Uh, over here we have the uh, different items that were on Google surveys. Please indicate the extent of your agreement with the following statements. I like Justin Bieber. This one's, I like the Kardashians. This, I like Star Wars. So these aren't real good variable names. What we need to do, first thing we're going to do is, I'm going, first thing I like to do is insert a couple blank lines at the top so that we can put in variable names. So I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to press insert. That gives me one blank line. And I'm going to insert a second black, blank line. Now in this line three, I'm going to put different variable names. What variable names am I going to use? I'm going to use the variable names that I've prepared on what's known as the code books. Let me bring this over here. And this data collection code book that I have is I've got all the questions that I asked and I've given each question a name. It's like the question about how much you like Justin Bieber. I called it Bieber, the Kardashians. Uh, I called the question about the Kardashians. Um, this question about, do you passionately love your uh, current uh, or most recent job? I called that JobCom1 for job commitment one. JobCom2 was, are you planning on staying at your job for a long time? And I've got three questions on a boss. And so each question that's measuring the same variable, I've put together. JobCom1 and JobCom2 are measuring the same variable, job commitment. Boss1, Boss2, Boss3 are measuring uh, what you th your one's attitude towards one's boss. And then I had five questions on extroversion, and I na na labeled E1 through E5. Now, some of the questions are reverse scored, and that means, so the first question is, do you see yourself as someone who's talkative? Now, extroverts tend to be talkative, so that's not a reverse scored question. But then the second question is, do you see yourself as someone who is reserved? So that one, strongly agreeing with that, uh, giving a high score, would, be the, would indicate the opposite of extroversion. And so this is a reverse scored one, so we need to change those scores around later, and we'll, uh, there's a separate video on how to do that. But we need to keep track of which items are reverse scored. So the only two reverse scored question items that I have here are, do you see yourself as someone who's reserved, and do you see yourself as someone who tends to be quiet? Those measure the opposite of extroversion, so they have to, the high scores have to be changed to low scores, and the low scores to high scores. So I've got these codes here, and now I'm going to go over here, 
And so this first one, I like Justin Bieber. I'm going to call this Bieber. And it's usually best to, uh, in Excel, to not have any spaces and variable names. This question, which is about the Kardashians, I like the Kardashians. I'll call that Kardash. The next one is on Star Wars. Making them all one word with no uh, spaces. So this was, I passionately love my current job. So this is going to be job com one. The next one's job com two. Not super important not to make any mistakes about these. Here's boss one, my attitude towards my boss. Boss two and boss three. I can use tabs to go from one uh, cell to another easily. So boss three was I have a boss who's competent. Let's move over a little bit more. So the next one is uh, I see myself as someone who's talkative. So this is E1. Now something important is that all the I've got five extraversion questions and we said some are reverse scored, but sometimes there's subscales when you measure something. And so if we had different subscales of extraversion, like you might want to measure extraversion dominance or extraversion sociability, because they're both associated with being an extrovert. Extroverts tend to be dominant, they tend to be sociable. Um, but you, there are different subscales. So we, if this had been a dominant question, I could call this E D O M one, and I, if there was a sociability, I could have called it E S O C one. I knew that both that start with E would be extroversion, but I clarify what subscale they belong to. So this was I see myself as someone who's reserved. This is E two R. Now when we unreverse it eventually, we'll just call this E2. This one's E3. We've got E4. And then finally we've got, uh, I see myself as someone who tends to be quiet. That's E5 reversed. Okay, let's slide this over a little bit more. Now we've got some questions about commute time. And on my X, the code book, this uh, first one, how long does it take you when there's no traffic? That was, I called that one, look onto my code book, uh, commute, no traffic. And then this one is commute with traffic, which I called C-O-M-M-T. Now here we've got uh, uh, sex or gender. You can do either one, as long as you know what um, the numbers are referring to. Um, how old are you in years? That one will be age. And then our final question is, what is your shoe size? And I'll just call that shoe. All right, so now we have um, uh, names for all of our variables. Let's Put this into a table. So I'm going to do insert table, and it says, is, it, is this what the table is supposed to be? And it looks like it is. So I will go OK. And now we have the variable names, and we can sort by those variable names if we uh, need to. Now, before we can analyze, Another important thing that we need to do is we need to change all of these strongly disagree, strongly agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree. We need to change this to numerical uh, values. And this is a little tricky because you can't just say, oh, let's go replace all the words agree, because that occurs in agree, strongly agree, um, slightly agree if you use that. Disagree even has the word agree in it. So what we need to do is we need to start with the longest phrases first. So we're going to go to, uh, let's go to do control F for find. And we want to choose the find and replace. And the first thing, the, the longest one is neither agree nor 
disagree. And that is our middle value. Let's, let me bring the code book over here. And one was a definitely no or disagree. Five was a definitely yes or strongly agree. So the neither agree nor disagree is our middle value. And we're going to replace that with three. So let's uh, uh, replace all. And so there were 48 places that people had marked the neutral value there. Neither agree nor disagree. Now let's uh, uh, look for the, the next longest, which would be strongly disagree. So I change that to strongly disagree. And that's going to get replaced with a one, because strongly agree is shorter than strongly disagree. And we want to start with the longest ones first. Strongly disagree, which is the first value, the lowest value, and replace all. OK, so that got rid of a lot of them. Now we're going to go to strongly agree, and I've got a capital A in the way that I designed the, uh, the survey, and we're going to replace that with a 5, replace all, okay. Now we're going to, we've got disagrees and agrees left, so let's replace the disagree, and that is a 2, the second lowest. Replace all. Okay, and then we've got agree that is left. And that's going to be a four. Now, if I made a mistake any place along the line, I could use control Z to undo my uh, mistakes. So let's replace all. All right. So we have replaced the words with the numbers, except if we go over here, we find that, oh, we've still got a few things. We've got the uh, sex that is uh, um, uh, male, uh, labeled male or female. Now, in our, our code book and the way that we asked the survey, we had, uh, we specified, are you male or female? One or two? Now, asking if people are male or female, that's kind of, um, it's not clear if that's, sex or gender. Um, sex usually refers to one's biological state, and gender usually refers to one's uh, self-perception. Um, we only gave people two choices, so they probably viewed that as a, as a sex question, male or female. And in the, uh, the survey, we had said that one was male and twos were female. So that's what we will convert this as. So once again, we want to start with the longest. So we're going to do control find. Wait, let me click in the right cell here, or the right program. So control find. I'm going to choose replace. Let's choose female, which we said was two. Replace all. OK, now let's go for male which is the shorter of the two, and replace that with one. And there we have all of our data is now in numeric uh, uh, content. Now, is there anything else we want to do to, uh, to replace, uh, to prepare this data before we start analyzing it, before we check clean up the data to see if there's any bad data in it or before we start making our composite variables. This, uh, this first column, the timestamp, we don't really need that, but sometimes it's nice to number each participant. So I'm going to change column one to participant, and I am going to put a one for this first one. Oops. Let's, let's, uh, we've got some weird formatting going on. Let's delete everything in there. Delete. Let's go to home and change that to uh, the format. Let's just call it general, no specific format. Participant, we're going to call the first one one, the first one two, second one two. Now what we can do in Excel, if I do go up to the top one, press shift down arrow, select those two, I can just drag this all the way down to the bottom, and I get a number 1 through 
uh, 21. So we can, we can, I'm going to change this to participant uh, number. So that's, uh, if we want to talk about participant 9, something like that. So now we, uh, we better save this to file, save as. Um, and we will uh, call this uh, uh, survey data ready to analyze. And uh, I should have done that at the beginning because it's horrible to lose your data and lose your work at the uh, after you've been working out for a while. So now we've got survey data ready to analyze. Um, in an Excel uh, spreadsheet format in col with columns with the variables clearly identified. And now we can go and clean up the data and then create our composite variables after we uh, convert the reverse score to, uh, to non-reverse score.